Ethereum is up and the merge has been pushed back over the horizon. GPU mining is back on the menu. I've been talking recently about ASIC miners, these extremely hot, super loud, power hungry, purpose built machines for mining Bitcoin and Dogecoin and Litecoin and the like. They cost more money than most people want to spend and they're somewhere between very difficult and totally unrealistic to run in your house. But GPUs, well, pretty much anyone can run a GPU or two if you can get your hands on one. I'm here to talk about the realities of cryptocurrency mining on a graphics card. My name is Nicholas John and this is the Space Warehouse. I guess this video is just gonna date itself pretty much right away and throughout every data point I give out because all these things are just changing constantly from the price of Ether or Ergo or Raven or whatever you're gonna mine to the price of the cards that mine it. Not to mention the difficulty of the network or even the climate outside your house or wherever you're gonna put these things. In the winter time, it might be a joy to have an 1100 watt space heater just running all the time in your house or garage. Next summer though, maybe a hot, hot rack of computer gear running in the same room that you're trying to enjoy the spoils of your work might be a problem that you have to figure out a way to solve. I'm coming from the perspective of a 5 RTX 3080 GPU mining rig, or right around 500 mega hash per second, which is pulling right about 1.2 kilowatts. That's 1,200 watts continuously just for the graphics cards, all split into, at the moment, one desktop PC case and the rest just sort of laid out on my studio table, hashing away at the Phoenix 5.5C algorithm. Though I did just order all the parts I need to put together one more motherboard with a big fish tank to experiment with some of this total immersion liquid cooling. So look forward to that sweet, sweet content this week. As before, I'll start with the money. Profits. This setup, these 53080s, and these are the non-LHR original 3080s I bought back in May of 2021, which was just before the very, very worst time price-wise to get into this whole thing. I think I spent about $1,800 to $2,000 per card. So with the extra RAM, motherboard, hard drive, and all the risers and everything, I think I'm into this rig for about $10,000. Just as an exercise, let's just hop on the eBay real quick and see what they're going for today, even though we're all staring into the barrel of the merge cannon and yeah, actually right about the same or even a little more expensive still for the same cards. So going over to my historic stats and still this is just a snapshot for the moment because I'm holding all the ether I'm making. I don't cash out every month to pay the bills or anything. So if ether were to just slash in half suddenly, all of my historic stats are gonna slash in half with it because all the coins drop and raise in value together. It's not like you mine some coins at this price and you mine some other coins at this price. You just mine coins and the price will change, but all the coins that you ever mined will change with it. You just mine what you mine, and if the price rises, it's as if you've mined everything at that new higher price, if you were to sell at that price. It's all about when you decide to sell it. Anyway, so looking at what these five cards have made, I started in the middle of May, so that's 600 something, but then June, it's running at full speed. $1,540, $1,306, $1,412, $1,144. These cards are pulling in between $1,000 and $1,500 worth of ether every month. And if the most recent chatter is to be believed, we've got until at least June of 2022 to continue along the same path of mining Ethereum until the projections turn into like a gray area of the map that we haven't uncovered yet. So future profits beyond that are in the 100% speculation realm. I'm gonna keep mine running and just see what happens, but I'm not making any predictions at all as far as moving to another algorithm or mining a different coin and how much money I might make. Maybe I'll just throw them on nice hash and let that software decide where their hash power is most useful, if at all. But even in the absolute worst case scenario, I've already got the most expensive parts of five high-end gaming PCs that I can just put together and sell, which should recoup a great deal of the initial investment combined with about four and a half ethers is it ethers? Whatever, that I've already mined, which today is worth $19,000. Who knows what they'll be worth another seven months from now. And maybe the merge just gets pushed back some more and this train keeps on rolling. Anyways, that's the money, heat and noise. So the method you use in cooling your GPUs makes an enormous difference in how they'll sound. Here in my studio, I've been experimenting a bit between liquid cooled and air cooled cards. In addition, I work in here a lot. So not only do I wanna keep the cards cool, but the room also. So I've installed two window AC units. One of them, I pipe air directly directly onto the cards, so I can run those overclocks just a little higher, and the other one is just sort of controlling the ambient temperature of the room. I live down in Orlando, Florida, so even though we're heading into the fall season, surprise, the weather's still in the 80s in the daytime most days. Cooling is a main concern for all life, crypto mining notwithstanding. The liquid cooled cards are very quiet, basically silent. 
They do have fans on the radiators to dump heat from the coolant, but they run really slowly and you basically can't hear them at all, even when they're mining. The air-cooled cards, though, if you're just letting them rip with an overclock, will basically run their fans at 100%. It's not hard on the cards to do that. As long as the temperature's under control, you're not gonna, like, wear them out prematurely or anything, but they're a lot louder. But this is in the context of loudness of a computer fan. Put these things next to an S19J Pro ASIC that's mining Bitcoin, and suddenly they're gonna sound silent again. My solution to the air-cooled cards was spending extra money on electricity and AC, running cold air over the cards. That makes the fans go slower, and therefore they're quieter. All for the cost of about an extra dollar a day in electricity to run the AC. And as a result of that, what comes out of the other side of the card is just lukewarm air, so cooling the room is super easy. With the ACs off, this room heats up immediately, which in the winter, in any place that's not Florida, could be a bonus. My 3080s run on about 235 watts apiece, and I have five of them, so that's just under 1200 watts. But then, plus a motherboard, a CPU, whatever fans are going plus these two AC units and now we're at about 2,000 watts continuous that it takes to run this rig. If you're venturing into red panda mining territory where you're counting your cards by the dozen, well then go look at my realities of running an S19J Pro video to see the type of heat dump setup you're going to be looking into instead. At 11 cents per kilowatt hour, the rate of electricity where I live, my setup works out to cost about five dollars a day or 150 dollars a month in electricity costs to produce $1,500 a month worth of crypto. And that is one heck of a return on that money. So if you've already got a fairly high spec gaming computer, go start mining on it like right now. There really isn't a downside to it, especially in the winter. But starting a purpose-built GPU mining farm from scratch is not cheap. But I would say if you just can't stop thinking about it and if you have the money, just make sure you're buying current gen graphics cards. Sure, you won't be able to recoup the full price of them when it's time to sell them again, but by June of next year, they will have certainly mined more than the difference. And you should be in the green. I mean, unless there's another crash and you decide to sell everything at the bottom. I mean, shoot, the price of Ethereum could double by then. And it could also drop in half. So you're still gambling. I don't want to mislead anyone into thinking that I'm saying this is just automatically free money, just because historically the price has only ever gone up on longer time scales. Doesn't mean it will. Enough of us are going to hang on as long as we can, even longer than we should, that in my opinion, the used GPU market won't be flooded enough for the cards to come down too fast in price. But that could all very well be wrong, and it's an argument I for some reason read in the comment section of Reddit just about every night while I'm laying in bed waiting to go to sleep.